action. Okay, we're making our, uh, what is that, break uh, reservoir bracket? Yes. So I just got done chamfering this edge right here, but we, I'm going to chamfer this side here too, but I haven't got that far yet. So here's where the reservoir is going to sit like that looking. So it goes on here like this. Sticks out like that. Okay, the bolts are longer now. Okay, so that's going to be like that on the bike. Now these bolts here are now looking more like these ones would be. Right. So it's starting to look better. Okay, here's our reservoir. We got the hole in the bottom. So it's just a matter of how far out do you want me to put that. Obviously, we're not going to get our finger on the back side, but how much room do you want to have? Well, I'm pretty much this other way. right here where this edge is right here. Mm -hmm. That's about where I'm putting this edge right now is what I was figuring on doing. So is that going to be good for you like that, or? Well, this is going to go like this. Yeah, I don't know which direction that was headed either, but like that, so it's going to sit out a little bit further than that. It'll be about here. Now I can move it in, or I can move it out and have it hang out over the edge. No, no, the more solid, the more base it has, so, I think it'll be better because we can screw it in and it won't be able to Right, so right now teeter. we are going to be, it'll be like right there. And that's, the hole is at 525, I think, from this edge to here. And we'll just have a, I don't know if you want to use a flathead down here or just put a button head. I think we we'll just use a button head with a flat base. I think we should drill a hole and recess it and use an Allen. Um... I mean, we can just screw it in, screw well, it on. Well, you're going to have, it'll be pretty thin if you did that. But yeah, we can recess though. Yeah, but a button had to be pretty close too, but whatever you want to do. So anyway, is that going to be enough for you to work it or? Absolutely. And do you want me to, I figured I'd radius cut these edges a little bit to make them look more rounded. All right, just kind of go with the flow of these edges. Right, trying to make it match up. So that's, that's where I was at with it. So. Okay, I'm in the bracket here, <clears throat> cutting a chamfer. I just did this one here. So you can see how it looks for the bolt right there. We're going to run a little washer underneath the bolt head, so it'll be about flush when we're done. So I'm going to start chamfering all these edges over. So right now i got my numbers all set up over here, what to go to. So if I go over to an inch and a half on the other side over here, we got our same number. Close enough. So now we cut this side. Should be the same number. I think it might be close. So I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit. <clears throat> Always like sneaking up on things. First hit. side cut. Bolt drops in and we get the same amount of distance on both sides now. Now the reason I have the same dimension up here is because I came off my center line right here and so I go equal distance off both ways everything's equal. So when you do that that way it makes it easy. Whatever number you use on one side works on the other. If you come off this side and calculate it you have to keep track of more numbers. It's harder. So Make it easier on yourself. All right, so we got this part here done. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
flip this thing over and put the hole in here to hold the reservoir on. Right here. So it's a quarter inch hole, quarter twenty bolt. So I'm gonna use my number, which is 525 from the from this edge down to here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So we'll get back to you after I get this all swapped around. Okay, we're ready to put the hole in here, already center drilled it. So this is our F drill, which is one size over a quarter inch. There's our center drill here again. Put this back in there. Hard to do with one hand. But not impossible. Okay, we're going to chamfer this hole slightly. I'm going to use the center drill here to do it. Just break the corner off. Chaffer there, so it takes the burr out. So I'm going to flip this over. Do the other side here. Get your parallels here, hold you up. I come off the flat surface here, is how I set my center. So I'll use another parallel like this right here to hold it. Tighten it all up and it puts you right back in the same spot. Alright, I'll do this with two hands so I have to shut the camera off for now. Here's our uh, filler back here with the reservoir on it now. It's all mounted up on there. The button hand on the bottom. Got the tube going to come off the side right here. We've got room to get in here. Got room to unscrew it and get it off. So everything fits like it's supposed to. So now I'm going to go ahead and chamfer up these sides here with that same tool I just used and the other stuff. That way it'll blend in better with the round part of this housing right here. So it won't look like just a big chunk of aluminum sticking out there in the side of it. So we'll go ahead and uh, finish that up. And we'll show you what it's like when I get done. Here we're doing the machining here on this block. We're putting these chamfers over here right now. See how that looks. So <clears throat> right now this is tilting up on me a little bit. We'll get a gap on this side here in this parallel. <coughs> Excuse me. This other one's down nice and tight. Not much to hold on to with that chamfer. Anyway, to put these in there square, you put the parallel on the outside edge here so it repeats every time. So you get a nice even chamfer all the way around this thing. We got our stop set up here. There it goes down. There, and we lock it. And then we have our number over here, which is 575. I haven't cut this one yet, so we're going to do this at 600. Right there. Should be a pretty heavy cut. Number. 
Okay, this is called twine milling and it goes in the direction it kind of rotates. And this leaves a small uh, spine within it. See how it's a finer finish over here than what it was before. The direction you rotate makes a big difference. Okay, so that piece here is pretty well cut down now. Well chamfered so it looks a little bit better. When it sits on here. Yeah, I'll come back after I get bolted in. All right, I cheated. I bolted it on. All right, so now we can see what our chamfers look like on there. And you see how it blends into the body here a little bit better than it did. So, you got more of that rounded shape. So, I have a butt pin on the bottom. See the side the same way. And from our top view, you see how it looks a lot cleaner. You have those sharp edges in there anymore. So it's a more finished look. And once it's all painted, it'll be a closer looking. Now I could go in there and radius grind this all down. So we'll let the uh, we'll let Chip figure out if he wants to do it that way or not. You know, so you can file this down around and make it more look like this piece or leave its own uh, character to it with the sharp cut edges like all the other machine parts are. So, that's up to him. Anyway, it's mounted on there, it's functional. You can get the lid up off of here. You can get your fingers in here a little ways. The biggest thing is you have to have enough clearance here to get the uh, lid off. It's a little bit tight right in there, but it comes up. And if you didn't have enough room, you can be able to work on your brakes for the bike. Uh, disassembling the bike. That would really suck. There it is all the way down. So that's what it all looks like. So we'll let him clean it up the rest of the way. And then put whatever detail he wants on it. So in the meantime, that's what it's going to look like on the bike. So nice. Relatively easy part to make. Just a little time consuming. So a couple hours of work. No biggie. So anyway, we'll move on to the next project.